There is a lot of fuss about data contracts in the data land. But the truth is, contracts are boring. No one enjoys reading and lengthy negotiations that just seem to drag on forever. So should you even care about data contracts? Is it just a buzzword? Well, for having implemented myself, I can tell you that data contracts can save you from a lot of classic data problems. And the great news is that you can start at a small scale with less effort than you might imagine. In this video, we explore the nature of these problems, how data contract can provide solutions, and gather insight from data professionals who have successfully implemented data contracts in the wild field of the data world. So let's be pragmatic and dive into the topic, shall we? Contracts are like safety net. Think of it as an umbrella on a cloudy day. It might seem useless when you step outside, but when the rain starts pouring, and believe me, as part of a data team, you are going to have some pain on you. And the reason is pretty simple. Data teams are often put in the center of a huge spaghetti ball in terms of infrastructure. You're going to have one team with one microservice and one or more DBs, and then another team with another microservice and another DBs, and so on and so forth. Add on top of that all the external provider and your SaaS service that provide data, and you have the perfect spaghetti alla carbonara. Yes, my Italian accent sucks. So if you work in data, chances are high you faced multiple times this problem. The data is wrong, but your pipeline were green, so you have no idea why. It seems there is a problem upstream, but no one of your internal colleague knows why and who you should even contact. So, who are you gonna call? I mean, those ones are for ghosts, not for data. How did we end up there? Well, with data not being the first class citizen, data teams often start getting analytics from an existing infrastructure that serves other goals. They will plug the pipeline to an existing operational database and offload the data to a data lake or a data warehouse for analytics. So data team are stuck between the hammer, the operational database they have little to no control on, and the anvil, aka the business screaming their needs at your no! desk. So they can do some magics to some extent, but garbage in, garbage out. The more problem you get upstream, the more challenging is going to be for the data team. But Chad Sanderson, the data contract hero, is giving us some thoughts about why is it a hot topic at the moment. Uh, I think there's a few reasons. Right now, we're definitely in the middle of a transition from just getting basic data pipelines up and running um, on the cloud to the next natural uh, evolution of that, which which is a, a focus on quality and observability. This coincides with industry-wide shifts towards machine learning and starting to leverage data in more um, production-grade use cases. So serving data to end applications in like embedded dashboards and things like that. Uh, like I mentioned, machine learning models, artificial intelligence, just a lot more use cases for, for data in production. And as that is happening, it sort of coincides with this explosion of data, which resulted, which is the uh, outcome of the shift to the cloud in the first place. We started piping more data than ever before and to bring in whatever data that we want. And what teams started to find is like, oh, wait a second, when we do this and we don't have sort of a very clear data quality story in place, things can go off the rails really quickly. And that's where data contract can help. Instead of suffering of whatever is being thrown at you, data teams have an explicit way to ask what they need and put a more strict process to handle change management. It's all about being proactive instead of reactive. So how do we implement data contract? So what if you could redo everything from scratch in your infrastructure? It seems unrealistic at first, as today you have rarely the opportunity to work on a greenfield environment, but with today's cloud era, it's not so far-fetched. A classic implementation of data contracts involve using an event-driven architecture. And this helps for multiple reasons. First, events can be strongly typed and each event can be associated with a schema version. Second, it's pretty cheap if you use serverless components and the event is self-contained per topic. And finally, Event Platform, aka PubSub, offers built-in connector to downstream the data to the classic tool of the data team, would it be a data lake or a data warehouse. Technology like AWS Kinesis or Kafka, managed Kafka on 
AWS MSK, and of course, Google and Azure have their equivalent, and you have also Confluence offering managed Kafka on the different cloud providers. All those are good options to get you started. The idea here, for example, if you are consuming data from your internal products is to create a brand new contract with the backend folks and agree on the best need for the data consumers. Backend or product people have often already used case that involve event-driven architecture outside of analytics. For instance, communicating between two microservices. If that's the case, you have two options over there. Number one, you create a new dedicated event for data analytics. Number two, you reuse the existing event and extend the schema to fit your needs. Going for one will avoid to have an explosion of event type, but number two might be hard to discuss change as it will involve many use cases and therefore multiple stakeholders. So how is the process to create and modify a contract look like? So most event platform like Kafka or AWS MSK have their schema registry. In case of AWS, they have the AWS Glue registry. And for each event created, you will need to register a schema version associated. And all the different schema version will be stored in that schema registry. An easy way to implement such a process between a data producer and a data consumer is to leverage the Git process. All schema creation, change, deletion can go through a Git pull request. And with clear ownership and consumer of an event, you can quickly know who has to approve such a PR. The CICD pipeline then will pick up and deploy the change with the corresponding schema on merge to the schema registry. So basically on the pull request, the data consumer can play the role of a traffic cop. Please be always kind with your comments in the pull request. So the beauty of such a process is that it forced the discussion to happen before any change. So bonus is that you can actually implement data contracts without an event-driven architecture. If you have a place in Git where you keep all the DDL statements from your operational database that you are consuming to, creating, altering, deleting tables, you can still implement most of what we discussed. For instance, on any change done on a specific DDL that affects a table, there's a Git process alerting the data consumer that would need to approve. However, this situation is a bit harder because you basically put a contract on something that was already existing and where the data team didn't have the opportunity to speak up about what they need. A bit like a blind date. There is good and bad blind date. Finally, I wanted to hear someone else from the field and I discussed with Florian. How has the implementation of uh, data contracts influenced the way your data teams communicate with stakeholders? A data contract at Backmarktech is a schema definition. Uh, it's used to meet all data requirements before publishing data to our event bus. So it means you can have data types, documentation, naming conventions, and also define the squad ownership, uh, the PII and the version of this data contract. It introduces a major change by having a new safe place where our stakeholders meet and discuss the schema. So the population are the backend engineers, analytics engineers, but sometimes you can also have uh, product managers talking and discussing directly in uh, into the schema definition. It helps the data teams to define guidelines, uh, know what the data consumer need, and also to define ownership, data ownership to the producer with accountability. So for example, you, you can introduce a breaking chain, so you have to notify, you have to be uh, aware that you have data consumer on the other side. And you, you can also provide documentation on data, know what the usage uh, of the data is, how to access it and build on top of it. On the bigger picture, the business stakeholders are more confident in having data contracts to have more reliability on their ongoing use cases. In the past, many data flow were broken due to the schema change uh, needed to without being notified. So it means you break a lot of uh, use cases at the same time. Looking back on uh, the journey of this implementation of uh, data contracts and uh, schema definition, what is the one thing you wish you had done differently or considered during the process? Yeah, um, after iterating uh, over different versions of the data contract and promoting this event, uh, event bus for the microservices, and one thing that came up as the number one item on the stakeholders' pain list was the autonomy and speed for creating the first good data model. It means that it was really complicated for, for them to, uh, to switch from I can do whatever I want with my database model to a data contract defined with an engineer. As an advice, I would say uh, 
think about the sandbox environment where you can test, learn by doing your help. Uh, I mean, well, on the squad, on the product side, and try to find a, a very fast approach to, to test and learn and before going to pre-production and production. Of your so let's wrap up. Data contracts is all about giving back ownership to the data producers rather than having data teams suffering from whatever is being thrown at them. And that is great because it makes life easier for any downstream pipeline and avoid silos between products and data. So the biggest challenge, even if we talked about the technical implementation, is organizational. Data team must cross the barrier and talk with the backend about new processes. And that can be scary highlighting the current pain point and bringing visibility on how the data is being transformed and consumed often helps to drive the discussions. From the tooling itself, as we saw, you don't need a big bang and you can start progressively with a pub sub service, schema registry and Git for the data contract process. Find a suitable sponsor within your company, a backend or product friend that you've been interacting a lot and implement the pipeline from end to end start with a small event and extend the pattern. If you want to dive more about data contracts and the implementation itself, I'll put some guides and resources in the description and may the data contract be with you.